Birmingham winning the conference championship, followed by New Jersey, Memphis, Baltimore, and Tampa Bay. Best records regardless of conference, and here are the matchups today. Houston is here in Birmingham. Tomorrow, two games. Tampa Bay will be at Oakland, and we will have that game for you at 2.30 Eastern time tomorrow here on ABC. And we will have uh, bonus coverage for you from the Denver-Memphis game that will be played tomorrow in the Liberty Bowl. Al Trotwig will have the reports on that game for you. And then Monday, Baltimore is at New Jersey. They can't play there tomorrow because of the Grand Prix that's being run in the parking lot at the Meadowlands. And we'll have reports from the Baltimore-New Jersey game for you Monday during ABC's presentation of Monday Night Major League Baseball. Put you now live to Giant Stadium, where just beginning the third quarter, the Generals and Stars are hooked up in their quarterfinal playoff meeting for the USFL. The winner to face Birmingham next weekend as the USFL playoffs continue. The scoring story, Chuck Fusina scoring with only 50 seconds remaining in the first half to give Baltimore a 20-7 lead. That's just one minute after Herschel Walker dove into the end zone with his head first. You may have seen that earlier. Herschel was shaken up on the play but made it off the field under his own power. Remember, the Generals are playing without Doug Flutie tonight. Ron Reeves is their quarterback. They have just begun this third quarter at Giant Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Reeves getting hotter as the game has gone along. He connected on five straight to set up that touchdown play for the Generals to close out the first half. So, third quarter, Baltimore 20, New Jersey 7, New Jersey without question, in trouble. So now we switch you back to Chavez Ravine, where Al Michaels, Jim Palmer, and Howard Cosell are... Sold. Oakland Invaders take on the Memphis Showboats. Then on Sunday, the Birmingham Stallions will be hosting either the New Jersey Generals or the Baltimore Stars. Very close to throwing a shutout. Visiting Memphis. On Sunday, Baltimore goes to Birmingham. Last night, the defending champion Stars beat New Jersey 2017, and watch this punt return by Garcia Lane. Garcia Lane, out of Ohio State, was originally drafted by the Generals. They traded his rights to the Stars, and he has never forgiven New Jersey. He did it to him last year. He did it to him again last night. 91 yards for Garcia Lane. And the stars are in business. Chuck Fusina here goes up top to Scotty Fitzke for another touchdown. And then that doghouse defense. They were real favorites when they played here in Philadelphia. They come up big again. Mike Lush with the INT. And the stars, if they can win two more, will win their second straight USFL title. They're playing great ball right now. Don't really root for the team anymore because they're not in Philadelphia. But you have to feel good for Jim Mora and Carl Peterson, two nice guys. Yeah, and a lot of the guys still live here and are still around town. That's a good point, yeah. Uh, the world's going in. I think the fact that we beat them twice this year, uh, we feel like that we can beat them if we play our game. Uh, it's not going to be easy because they have a good football team, and to beat them three times in one year is going to be quite an accomplishment by us. But I think we can we can do it. It was place kicker Danny Miller who made the difference against Houston. Miller kicked five field goals, including one from 57 yards, as the Stallions won over Houston 22-20. The Baltimore Stars in the playoffs for a third straight year played at New Jersey Monday night. This 91-yard punt return by Garcia Lane got the Stars out in front, and they went on to beat the Generals 20-17. The Stars are the defending champions. They had to win five of their last six to make the playoffs, and this, remember, is the team that took Birmingham out last year in Philadelphia 20-10. Quarterback Chuck Fusina has had another good season, hitting 61% of his passes. Chuck is the same old tough competitor. Kelvin Bryant, the premium running back for the Stars, nicked and bruised much of the season, still totaled more than 1,200 yards and 16 touchdowns. And his playoff stats over three years have been particularly impressive. He must have a big game tomorrow. Coach Jim Mora has this comment on the matchup against Birmingham. They had the second best record in the league this year. They're an outstanding football team. Uh, both games this year, as you recall, have been defensive struggles. In fact, if you combine both games that we've had with Birmingham this year, the final score would be 21 to 10 in their favor. You know, that's a fairly low scoring game for one game. If you combine the yardage for the two games we played this year, they made a 480 on us and we made 511 on them. That's two games. So, um, if that's indicative of what you might see Saturday, 
for Sunday is going to be a low-scoring defensive battle, because you never know. The guys in the trenches and the bodies are going to be flying around at Legion Field, Birmingham, Baltimore. We'll have... in the postseason playoffs. You're double tough when you go onto the home field of an arch rival and beat them, but that's what the Baltimore Stars have done. This record 91-yard punt return by Garcia Lane got the Stars off to the lead against the New Jersey Generals last Monday night, a lead they would hold all game. The Stars trying to reach the USFL championship game for a third straight season. They are led by quarterback Chuck Fusina. He has been the Stars quarterback from the beginning. And the doghouse defense, which has been a cornerstone of this team, kept Herschel Walker in check Monday night to beat the Generals 20-17. It's a defense that allowed the fewest points in the USFL this season, second overall in defense to the Birmingham Stallions. The Stallions won the Eastern Conference Championship at 13-5, endured a breathtaking 22-20 win over Houston in the quarterfinals. Place kicker Danny Miller had five field goals, including this 57-yarder. But Jim Kelly kept Houston in the game and with time running out, Tony Fritch just missed this 49-yard field goal that could have beaten the Stallions. The Stallions have beaten the Stars twice this season, but both wins very close. They will try to make it three straight today as ABC Sports presents... The semifinals in the USFL 1985. Baltimore and Birmingham, the winner plays Oakland for the USFL title next Sunday night. We're at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama for this second semifinal game in the USFL playoffs. The weather is relatively mild, all things considered. Obviously a little warmer down on the field because of the artificial surface. The Stars and the Stallions, and a ball game that offers the ticket to the championship game next Sunday night against the Oakland. Oakland Invaders, the Western Conference champions, beat the Memphis Showboats 28-19. It was an impressive win for the Invaders at Memphis, and they're back home now waiting to see which team will qualify for the in the USFL. The two previous games clearly reflect the quality of the defense on both sides. Look at that, 7-3 and 14-7. Those are unheard of scores these days in professional football. And here's why. The, ba the uh, Baltimore Stars allowed the fewest points per game uh, and overall during the season, whereas Birmingham allowed the smallest amount of yardage to the opposition. And they're both impressive numbers as far as I One of those fellows could emerge and have a big ball game and swing a decision. Both guys are going to have a tough way to go against the defenses they face today. Joe Krebs cracked, or excuse me, bruised two ribs last week. There's going to be some question mark about what he will be able to do this afternoon. Kelvin Bryant was hurt during the course of the year, a bad ankle. He only ran the ball six times against Birmingham when they last played, but he's reaching a peak just when you want him the most. This is offensive tackle Irv Eatman. Let's hear from Irv now as he talks with our Tim Brandt. All right, Keith and Irv, you have heard the criticism personally because when this team needed key yardage, they always came behind you. There are some people that said, this has not been your year. Does that work as an incentive? Well, naturally, when you have a little adversity like we've had during the course of the year, naturally, we got to look for the, to, somewhere to put the blame. And since I'm one of our key players, naturally, uh, I should take some of that blame, and I do. But I, I feel like, you know, I've had a good year, and I'm always particularly concerned about it. Coaches and the players have been happy with, and that's all I'm concerned about. I'm going to ask you right up front, is this the toughest defense you've faced all year? I don't think it is. I think they may be one of the best defenses statistically. They are the best statistically, but not the toughest because uh, they predicate their whole defense on fooling people, but they're not going to fool us today. All right, I'm going right across the field right now, and I'm going to talk to Mike Perko, who's going to be on the other line. Any message for him? Well, all they better do is stop it all, because uh, we came to play, and we're going to take this ball game today. All right, Keith. Birds with the problem of pursuing Fusina today, trying to contain him, trying to shorten his time of view, is Mike Perko, the mountain man now with Tim. It has always been fun. Now, we talk about the fact that Birmingham defeated Baltimore twice this year, 7-3 and 14-7. You can't forget that it was the Philadelphia Stars that took the Birmingham Stallions out of the playoffs last year up at Franklin Field. They just simply handled them 20 to okay. Opposite the start of the game, you're playing too Let's much under control. Right so why not have the offense out there taking their time, filling out the opposition, 
and then trying to get the momentum. Wearing the white shirt, home colors, Dave Trout is the place kicker. For the Birmingham, uh, uh, for the Baltimore Stars and Birmingham's, uh, Danny Miller, of course, was the hero of the city throughout the course of the week after kicking five field goals last week. When they were warming up, Keith, before the game, he had a couple of warm-ups of 50 yards and everybody was applauding him. Trout nailed it. He's pumped up. Ball goes deep to McFadden. Bad McFadden at the 15-20 and down at the 21 or 20. Ken Kohler is in there at a wide spot now. Well, they open with three wides and the ball is handed to Joe Cribbs. And Cribbs has a yard. Could be the first pass of the afternoon by Cliff Stout. Straight back. Sideline pattern. Picked off. And it could be six. Jonathan Sutton. Touchdown. Stout did not look off anybody. He threw the ball to the first man he looked at. And Sutton was laying right there and just simply stepped in front of Smith and away he went. Keith, and trying to figure out what was going to happen in this ball game, talking with our producer before the game, I had said the field position and the least number of turnovers would probably dictate who would win this ball game. Chris Stout just backs up. He's looking for Tola. Sutton read him all the way. As you said, he did not look off. The receiver stood right at him. And a good cornerback, when he's playing the zone, reads the eyes of the quarterback and follows them directly to the ball. 36 yards on the interception and return for a touchdown. And Trout nails the extra point. The USFL second all-time leading scorer at 353 now has 354. And so bang bang at the start of the ball game. The Baltimore Stars, Jonathan Sutton takes it in for the PD on the interception in a 7 it's 7-0. Stars lead on Sutton's interception return of 33 yards and Stout back to throw on third down. Fuller's out there pursuing. Fuller's got it. Mills came from the inside, but it was William Fuller, the big fella from North Carolina, who just stood him up, played him off, and Lane had a 91-yarder that got him off and winging against New Jersey last Monday night. Parsons, a very high kick and a very good punt for Bob. Back at the 43 for Lane. And he is brought down just short of midfield at the 49-yard line by Ted Walton. Setback, Spitsky, Caber, Wyatt, and Dunnick is the tight end. And it's first down stars at their own 49-yard line. With 11 minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Eusena <laughs> gives to Bryant. Bryant is caught behind the line of scrimmage and he goes down at the 43 and it's Dave. Dugan, Oates, Comiskey, Eatman. And the defense for Birmingham is Purifoy, Klein, Smith, Perko out of a four-man front. The backers are Spencer, Rowe, and Kelly. And the secondary, Woodbury, Jumars, Clanton, and Evans. Loss on the play of six yards. It is second down and 16. <laughs> you see the back to throw. No pressure, throws it underneath to Kelvin Bryant. And Bryant wheels and deals to the 35 and down to the 30. And Willie Collier has come into the ball game for Baltimore. Coming off of a broken collarbone. Yusina keeps the ball. He was looking to give it away, but he was looking for somebody to come through the hole on the left side. And Jim Mora, the coach of Baltimore. Raleigh Dot, the head man of Birmingham. Two well-constructed organizations and two good football teams. <laughs> you see the back to throw it. Going to the corner. Collier, touchdown. No, it is uh, Victor Harrison. Victor Harrison, the defender, fell down. David Evans, I believe it was, got tangled up and fell down. The play goes for 30 yards, and the Baltimore Stars have jumped out to a two-touchdown lead. Now it looked like David did not want to get called for pass interference, so he was pulling back as he was stumbling down. In that case, he should have just really jumped all over Victor Harrison, taking the interference call as opposed to giving up an easy touchdown. Victor Harrison was behind him. It was a very well-thrown pass. Had he stayed up, he would have had to have made a spectacular leap, Keith, to knock that ball down. Dave Trout knocks it through. 
Oh, well, David has added two more points to his career total. There's the young man that carried it in for the touchdown, Harrison. Only his fourth touchdown of the year, and here's another look at the play. Play action pass, holding the linebackers. Allen Chuck to see them more time to get the ball away. And the two quick touchdowns on the interception, and now here the long pass by Piscina to Harrison have come on the backs of mistake and poor plays by the Birmingham Stallions. If they continue this play, it's going to be a rout. 9.17 to go in the first quarter, and it's 14-0 stars. Got the 40, and Kelvin Bryant outside as a receiver. Instead, the ball is thrown underneath to Dunnick. Well, almost at will. Baltimore coming out, playing a very, well, not very wide open, but much more open a football game than I think we're accustomed to seeing from there. Bar to four different receivers. Well, he's, he has to be able to spread the ball out. His defense are certainly as definitive as the score, aren't they? They certainly are. That minus two yards for Birmingham comes on a four-yard completion and a minus six-yard sack. Look at the number of yards passing for Baltimore. 104 already in the first quarter. They're averaging 194 in a game, per game, on the season. From the 30, Fusina gives it to Kelvin Bryant, and he's loose in the secondary and bangs his way across the 18. To come back and make it to the playoffs and be here in the semifinal game is the fact that people had them written off early in the season. I certainly did. I thought they were playing very poorly, but there would be no way they'd make it to the playoff game. A 70-yard pass run play if you've seen it to Kelvin Bryant. And Bill Rowe had no chance to catch Kelvin Bryant. The easy and it's part, getting serious now for the Birmingham Stallion. You're right. The easy part of this play is for Kelvin Bryant to run the pattern. The tough part was on Chuck Fusina as he steps away from pressure. He is almost sacked right there. He's almost sacked. He steps up into the pocket, lets it fly. It's a perfect pass over the shoulder. Nice, soft pass for Kelvin Bryant. And the North Carolina Tar Heel just runs it easily into the end zone. And Trout comes in trying to make it a 21 to nothing Baltimore Stars lead. Baltimore has no trouble playing on the road. They've done it all year. They live and work in Philadelphia and get on a bus and travel down the road for home games at College Park. So coming to Birmingham is no big deal for them. Bryant now, 32 yards running, 98 yards receiving. He's totaled 130 yards in the ball game, and here's another look at the TV. And right here, he looks like he's in good shape. He just takes it outside release. Bill Rowe has no chance, man-to-man -man coverage. He never even came close to being with Kelvin Bryant on the play. So it's 7 minutes and 37 seconds to play in the first half. It's a how do you do. 21 nothing. Star. And only the two best will be left. This is what sport is all about. The confrontation. The USFL League Championship. Next Sunday night live at 8 Eastern on ABC. Number 21, Chuck Fusina now with Tim Brandt. Having a big day. That's funny we're saying that you made the play, stepping up away from the blitz and avoiding a sack, but you're giving credit elsewhere. Well, I'm giving credit to our quarterback coach. I think Paul Smith came up with a good game plan today. We knew they'd be playing a lot of man, and Kelvin's our fastest player. So he said, hey, get it out to Kelvin, and I just had to step up in the pocket and get it to him. Couldn't have figured it was going to be this easy, though. It's not that easy. Let me tell you, they're a great team, and we're going to have to play awfully hard to win this football game. All right, Keith. Tough old competitor, isn't he? Yes, he is. <laughs> That pass play was the longest in Stars history, 70 yards for Kelvin Bryant. Now it's time for first down. For the Birmingham team to realize that this is, they're behind by 21 points. They've got a long way to go to get back in this ball game or to possibly get on top. He still has time to bring this team along carefully and back into this ball game, but they have to come up with a big play. On third and a year. Five minutes, two minutes warning game to come your way in 20 years. The championship of the USFL. Sunday, July 14th, the United States Football League will crown its champion beginning at 8 p.m. at the Meadowlands. This is your chance to see football at its best. Tickets are available at the Meadowlands box office. 
and all tickets on outlet. Pratt with a wet towel on his head, resting on the sidelines. I still question, as you do, uh, just how physically sound Big he is. Big run, and gets it out of the 37-yard yeah. line. And they've got to go to where? They've got to go to the 26 for the first down. So they need 13. Deep drop by Fusina. Got a man wide open down the middle, and Willie Collier dropped the ball. Touchdown, Baltimore! Did you 76 hear? yards for Kelvin Bryant. Did you hear it, Keith? That was the other shoe that just dropped. I do believe. Well, the man that the Birmingham Stallions worried about has hit him with two huge plays today. One in the second quarter for 70 yards on a pass from Yusina. This time, Bryant picks his way brilliantly through the traffic and goes 76. The Herschel Walker could not even get 100 yards in this ball club. Kelvin Bryant comes jaunting through that line, turns it into a sprint, and rips off 76 yards in one impressive play. And again, he goes behind the right side, Eaton and Kaminsky, to get the initial start. Stop for the extra point. Got it. And so at 12 minutes and 43 seconds to go, it is now 28 to nothing, the Stars. Kelvin Bryant has run for 121 yards. Caught passes for 101 yards. He has produced 222 yards. He wasn't even hit until number 24, Chuck Clatton, came up from the secondary and bounced off his ankles. Kelvin Bryant, plagued with injuries throughout the season, now reaching his peak, brings him another touchdown. In playoff games of 1983 and 84, he has rushed the ball 117. Well, you know, I was a little tired, a little busy because it was kind of hot out here. Uh, and I had to come back in and, you know, uh, the line did a good job and opened up the hole and I just ran through there. Hey, B, have you really reached your peak in conditioning this year at all? Yeah, you know, uh, it's just real hot out here and when it's hot like that, you know, you have to keep coming out. Is this game over? Well, no, Birmingham, they got a, a good team, so we got to keep playing. Don't know if they can score 28 points though in 12 and a half minutes. <laughs> he found some clock to hold on to. 10-20 to go in the game. <laughs> Now throwing again, looks toward Kohler, goes down the middle instead to Smith, and Jenny dives to the 20. Now it is third down and four. No. As pissed out, scrambles, looking for time to throw the ball, he wants six points, he finds him, puts it deep in the end zone, and watch here, both feet on the ground, inbounds, he stretches out. Freddie Belitnikoff would be so proud of you. <laughs> Pick is up, and... If they can hold on to their 21-point lead here with seven minutes to go. Harvin again. That's not a first clock, and Chuck Fusina. To get there, and only the two best will be left. This is what sport is all about. The confrontation. The USFL League Championship next Sunday night live at 8 Eastern on ABC. Right now back in the ball game and Bryant's got it. That's the way it looks for next Sunday night, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Giant Stadium, Meadowlands, East Rutherford, East of Rutherford, New Jersey. Stout gets it away for Smith. And I think Birmingham has recovered it. Takes the snap and just sits down. He's just come up short of making it to the championship game. Again now to kill the clock. And it's running at 47 seconds. Birmingham with no more timeouts remaining. Cliff Stout. A monument to dejection as of this moment. Bryant, 116 yards on the ground, 101 yards in the air, a total of 217 yards for him. And Bryant scored two touchdowns. Jonathan Sutton picking off Pustout's first pass of the afternoon, running it into the end zone for a touchdown. Got the defense fired up, inspired off on the good foot. 
and the defense played an outstanding ball game and this one is history now to Tim Brand as he talks with Jim Mora well they said it couldn't be done three championships in a row Jim and you did it and you faced all types of adversity getting here well you got to give a lot of credit to this football team uh, they had a they had a lot of adversity like it said and they kept battling back all year they had a lot of pressure situations a lot of must wins and they just uh, they didn't quit you know and a lot of people didn't think we'd be here but uh, we're going back, and that's the main thing. It's a great group of guys and a great coaching staff, and uh, I couldn't be more proud of them. Jim, is it a little bit more special than the first two because you were 5-6-1 and one at one point on the ropes, then you were evicted from the stadium, and I mean, it seems like everything that could go wrong did. It is. This, this, this I feel better about going this time than I have the first two because of the things that we've had to overcome, and nobody, nobody realizes what this team's had to overcome this year, and, and nobody will understand it, only the guys that were involved, but they've done a tremendous job of coming back and... Uh, I couldn't be more proud of them, like I said. Congratulations. We'll see you in New Jersey. Thanks very much. Okay, Jim. All right, Keith. So your final score is 28-14. The Stars going to the title game for a third consecutive time, and one of the reasons right there, Chuck Fusina. He has been the quarterback from the very beginning, and he will be the quarterback next Sunday night when the Stars play the Oakland Invaders. I've never seen a better competitor.